Okay, um, the Neighborhood Watch Program, uh, we, we absolutely want to emphasize, I think Chief will do the same, this is community based, community owned. We would be the technical assistance to you in the sense of helping you get organized, helping you access information, uh, helping you coordinate, that's where we want to fit into this. I'm hopeful there may be quite a few of you that are interested in being zone captains meaning that you will take the responsibility of, of organizing your zone and then you will go over which particular zones and those things in a little bit here. But you have to own it. You, it'll be your responsibility to do meetings. It will be your responsibility to, to, to work with the people underneath you. And that may include soliciting neighbors on other sides of the block if you're trying to get into certain use cases. Um, ideally, if, you can, if, if all of you are perfectly spread out, you'll be staggered down the block that you'll be able to cover from a viewing standpoint from your front porch to the block. Um, that may not always be the case. And we'll have to figure that out later when we get the addresses put in place. But um, again, we, we want to stress that. It's, it, it'll be your projects and we will help you coordinate them. There won't be time on a monthly basis if you choose to meet monthly, if you feel you need to meet monthly, that, that Officer Beth or Chief or myself are going to be able to go to six different meetings every month. That's just not reality. It's not going to happen that way. If on occasion you need my input or you need the department's input to provide information, I'm hopeful we can set up a structure where the zone captain maybe has an email and we can impart information about criminal activity so you all know what to keep an eye out for. That kind of situation with that structure in place. But it, you have to own it. Let me say that. That I will <coughs> sit down now and stop talking, and I will let the chief talk about the specificity of what a neighborhood watch does, what it should do, what it shouldn't do. Chief, thank Thanks. you very much. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone for coming tonight. Um, I've been with the police department for about 30 years, and uh, we've tried several times to do a neighborhood watch, and it really never took off. I can tell you this much, this is the biggest crowd that we've ever had in 30 years in about three or four attempts. So that's a positive right off the bat. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank, again, everyone for coming. I'd like to thank Nick. I'd like to thank the council people who support this, this program. And this program is a community program. It's not a police program. However, tonight, I wouldn't like to call this an organization or an organizational meeting because it's too loose right now. We need to get the word out a little more. We need to tighten up what we want to do. We need to get more people involved as far as groups in certain areas. Okay, we'll go over the areas and the maps where you where your particular residents uh, are located. You'll be able to um, see the zones. The reason that if you notice over there the zones. They're a little different than the wards. I know right away people think about the wards. Um, that they're a little different, and, and that's because that's the way we're dispatched. So we'll go over the zones later on in the program. But um, my feeling on input tonight is if you have a question, um, if you're anything like me, sometimes like by the end of the program, you forget the question you wanted to ask. So if you do want to interrupt me, that's fine. Um, I know I have a heckler in the back here. We, we can't let her get away with heckling me, so, so we will take questions. Um, if you want to come <coughs> before we there. Um, before we start on that, one other thing. Uh, spread the word about the content tonight that we go over. Spread the word, spread the word about the zones. 
spread the word about the program. If you and three or four neighbors decide that, that maybe you're the only ones interested in this particular area, this particular street, maybe there's you and your husband, you and your wife are, are, are the only ones that are interested, feel free to call me, feel free to, to ask for a meeting with me, and, and we can come in and, and go over what you can do. But there is strength in numbers, and the more that you can get together and get on the same page, the smoother it will run. We will have our bumps. We will have a lot of things that, um, you know, you might get an officer to, to respond to your complaint, and that officer may not, and probably has already happened to some of you in this room, may not give you the answers you want, or you may not like the way the officer responds to you. Um, that happens. Those are some of the bumps we have to work out. Uh, Sometimes the, I might not have the time when you have the time, but I will make time eventually to sit down with anybody who would make a request and, and need to meet and need to explain these, these uh, things in the slide that we're going to go over. Okay, Beth. Um, one half all the crimes committed in the U.S. go unreported. That's why neighborhood watches are created. Neighborhood watches sit with you and your neighbors working together with our police department to reduce criminal opportunity on your street. One thing about this, criminal statistics are probably one of the most unreliable statistics that are reported. We do a uniform crime report. Uh, if you don't have a date of birth of a victim, it doesn't get reported, even though the crime happened. Uh, if so many crimes happen that aren't ever reported. A lot of times, crimes don't fall into the categories go reported on the UCR. So when the FBI tabulates all the criminal statistics, they're probably about half off of, of the crime that's actually committed. Okay. Participants involved in the neighborhood watch the learn principles of deterrence, delay, and detection. Pretty simple, pretty common sense. Deterrence, don't have opportunity in your neighborhood. Keep your doors locked don't have attractive nuisances in, in your yards. Um, delay is make it tough on these criminals. If, if a criminal has to work to get what he wants, he would have a job. He wouldn't, be, he wouldn't try to be breaking in. So anytime that, that, it, that he has to go through work to get to what he wants, He's going to go to the next house. Maybe that door's open. Maybe that car's open. Okay, so we need to make that delay. We need to delay his actions and crime. Detection. We need to know what to look for. Um, probably when I do our statistics in the department every month, one of the most um, highly reported category is suspicious person activity or event. We usually get about 50 of those a month, okay, for people to call in because, well, in that category, everybody seems to think that's a lot, but there's a lot that encompasses that. If, if there's an open window, an open door where somebody's away, uh, a suspicious person in the neighborhood, a car driving up and down the, the, the block, um, multiple cars coming to a resident that usually lead you to believe there's drug activity. Um, things like that. Those are all suspicious, suspicious persons, automobiles, or events. So that is a big thing, and that is probably <coughs> the most, the most uh, reported thing that you will be involved with. Is, yes, sir. You said I could interrupt. Is that fine? Sure. Okay. So are you telling me that you answer that immediately when, when someone makes that sort of call, or how do you do that? just depends what it is. If it's something that it wouldn't make a difference whether we responded or not, like um, somebody calls and, and, and would say that uh, my neighbor's dog keeps getting out of the fence or something like that, that wouldn't be pressing where we would have to go up and say, hey, look, keep your dog on leash or keep it in the yard. But if there's a car driving up along, up and down the street. We would go up and stop the car and, and ID the person and ask them, you know, maybe it could be simple as they 
many directions. I mean, they might be looking for a house or, uh, you know, things like that. But yes, we do answer the suspicious activities, especially if they're like, a lot of people call if a, if a person's out of place in their neighborhood. If somebody there is just, I mean, everybody in this room, I'm sure, is aware of bicycle ball. Bicycle ball probably holds the record for suspicious persons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we probably get have gotten 100 calls on him over the years. So it's things like that that are the suspicious things we react to right away. Or if you know that your neighbor is on vacation and you see lights on and your neighbor tells you, hey, these three lights are gonna be on every night, they're on a timer. And, and at night, you see the whole house lit up and there's no, but no cars there and you know they're still on vacation. That's a suspicious activity you would look at right away. Does that answer your question, Ben? Yes, okay. yes, thank you very much. <coughs> okay, you can go ahead and slide. Um, success of the program, communication, not only communication with communicating your, your complaints, your suspicious activities with the police, but communication with each other. Like I said before, we weren't pods, I'll call them pods of people. I guess that's better than packs, right? <laughs> so pods of people that, that get together and decide they're gonna take care of this area. There could be two. There could be two that get together and make one big one, but none is, you know, we don't want neighborhoods with none. We don't want people saying, I don't want involved at all. I mean, that's where it becomes susceptible and, and what we talked about on the last slide. A structured network, it doesn't have to be a tightly structured network. We're not looking at a paramilitary organization. <laughs> we're, looking, we're looking at people who communicate, people who say, hey, call me, I'll call the police, or maybe you have a relationship with a, an officer that you have, you know, a uh, conversation with on a regular basis, you know them, and, and uh, you say, hey, if you, you have anything, I know so-and-so. You know, he'll talk, he'll talk to the guys that are working, or whatever, however it happens. We have to, to have structure where not everybody's calling on the same call, okay? But, on the same sense, we don't want to have a phone tree if there's an emergency. You know, I mean, we don't, if there's an emergency, you call 911, I don't care if 10 people call. But, when it's suspicious activity, when it's maybe one of your neighbors, you notice is leaving an opportunity there in their yard and you can't get a hold of them you can call and say hey my neighbor left their gate open and, and you can see right in their backyard and their back door is open uh, can you check on it make sure everything's okay things like that you don't want 10 people calling for something like that okay so it's up to you how you structure it though I mean, if you want to make it paramilitary, you can, but I'm not involved in that. <laughs> I can't even get my police department to be paramilitary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get in there and get important things. Um, three levels of participation. You can go to the next slide. Okay, the resident. That's, of course, anybody uh, that is involved or not involved. Um, the block captains and co-captains. You can decide who's going to call when there's a certain activity. Um, you can decide what to look for. And then the local law enforcement representative, of course, that would be me. Um, if you're not satisfied with the service you get, I'm the one you talk to. Okay? Um, I have a great group of guys and a girl, and I have all the confidence in the world in them. And uh, sometimes, like everyone in this room, like myself, we have a bad day and sometimes we're human, we say things we shouldn't say and it offends people, even though we don't know it. But that's not saying that they shouldn't be called on the carpet and told that it shouldn't happen again. So if there is a problem, uh, your complaints are important, your input's important. If you're not getting the service you want, you call me. Um, Go ahead and next time. Okay, no vigilantes. <coughs> um, <laughs> we don't have a standard ground on Lake Trail. So we 
don't need uh, vigilantes. Uh, no one needs to take personal risks. No one's asked to be a hero. You don't confront these people because uh, obviously if you're in a situation where you have to defend yourself or your family, and I understand that and I would never question that. But um, we don't need a case like we're having down in Florida. We don't need anything like that. And I don't think we should in this town. I don't think that's going to be a problem. I think we have a lot of, you know, tonight I see a lot of responsible individuals here, um, and John Pins, that um, <laughs> we, uh, we don't need to do that. Okay. Um, neighborhood watches are not for complaining about your neighbors, complaining about city <laughs> services or black health, civil problems, using the police. Raising your children. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> we get all those. Uh, we don't want to hear about the totes are too big that the city put out for recycling. <laughs> uh, we don't want to hear uh, your neighbors have a loud party and the only reason you're calling is because you weren't invited. <laughs> we get that a lot. Um, Children, I like the ones that, that, that call us because they have a combative six-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> There's something wrong there. Okay, but we do get those calls. So these are some of the calls that really, they're just wasting your time and our time that uh, I have no problem with if there's a, you know, you have a question on something like that and you want to call me and talk to me. And, and, and we can go over so I don't have a problem with that, but it, it's not something to call on with. Okay. Um, we're going to go over some of the most common crimes that you guys would encounter when you're watching. Okay, burglary is the first one, and that's the, anyone entering a neighbor's house when they're away, anyone entering and leaving a place of business after hours, any stranger in your neighborhood. Sounds of breaking glass, smashing, and crying. Those are all things you look for. Burglary is in the crimes code is entering a structure to commit a crime within. So it doesn't necessarily mean someone's breaking in to steal something or hurt someone. It could be someone breaking into a vacant house to have shelter for the night, somebody that's homeless. But we still need to know about it. And we still need to respond to that. So, and they would be charged with murder because they are they are committing the crime of trespass. Any crime that you commit inside that building once you break in or enter is considered a murder. Okay. And the difference between we we always get this too that um, I, I I've been wrong. Okay. Rob is when something takes, someone takes something off your person. When they actually take it away from you, not done, they steal your purse, or they, they mug you. Those are robberies. Everything else is a burglary or a theft. But robbery is only when a person physically takes it off. So you, that's good to know because we don't know if we're dealing with somebody that's assaulting someone or it's just something that uh, a house that may have broke, been broken into two days ago. So that's important to know. You don't want to call and say, I've been robbed. Right away I think that oh, somebody's been assaulted and they stolen or something like that. So we get that a lot. That's good to, to, to know the difference between those two when you're reporting. Okay, theft. Anyone peering into parked cars, that's probably one of the most common uh, you come out in the morning and you see that your ashtray is gone or your dome lights on or your doors open or ajar uh, and, and then you look further and your, your GPS is gone and, and your CDs are gone. That's so common. They usually hit 10, 15, 20 in the night and it's a nightmare in the morning when you come in and, and, and that's when you get the angry officer because he's on his about 8th or ninth one. And, and, and somebody says that, uh, you know, I, well, I didn't have anything stolen, but I want to report me. And the officer says, you don't need to report me. So those are some of the uh, instances where you get the grouchy officer. So um, the one the park bars is a big one. Uh, anyone hiding merchandise in their person, 
and funding package purchases of books. I mean, uh, you see somebody walking up the street with a backpack on their back and they walk past your neighbor's house and the backpack suddenly has a UPS package in about this big sticking out their back. You know, there's some suspicion. You probably ought to call. So that also is a, that I think is also if you're in a, in a basic retail um, things like that. Um, anyone removing accessories, gas, or license plate from a car um, don't have too much of that. Uh, cycling gas is bigger meter, but it's not too much. I don't think people don't even taste it. Cycling it. Um, listen for offers of merchandise at a ridiculously low price. That's a great one. Uh, you know, you, you, you look at Craigslist and eBay and stuff like that. You're only going to get what you pay for on there. If somebody comes up to you with a, with a Rolex watch and you know, it's an original and they own 10 box for you or something like that, you know, or jewelry. Uh, when, when we'll talk a little bit later how a lot of these are related. Uh, crimes are related to, to drug use and drug sales, how a lot of the thefts and things are interrelated. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But this is a big one. I mean, uh, guns. We have people selling guns for 10 bucks. We have people selling, you know, uh, TVs, flat screen TVs, $20. Even though they're hot, you know, they're, you know, some of them still in the they're fancy. So, uh, you only get what you pay for. If you, and, and, and when that rule doesn't apply, it's probably still. So just remember that. Uh, some deals are too good to be true, and then you end up with the receiving stolen property to our That's not good. Okay. Um, anyone? Okay, we're, we're looking at the assaults now. Uh, these are pretty hit you in the face. I mean, when the assault's going on, you know you, you know what's going on. Uh, anyone carrying or displaying guns, knives, or any other weapons? I mean, I'm probably. Uh, the most pro-gun person there there is, but um, I I do believe that they have their place, and I don't think that people should be open and displaying them, carrying them around, and and uh, it, it only means trouble, especially in bars and in places like that. People going with the gun strapped on, it's only trouble. Uh, so anybody that's carrying guns or knives, things like that, you know, I've had people call in and say. You know, there's a guy walking up and down my street. He has a gun strapped on him. You go and talk to the guy and say, you know, you really think this is a good idea and right away. Hey, it's my right. You know, I can do that. I'm allowed to carry a gun. I mean, yeah, he's technically right, but at least you're aware of it. And you, you ID him, you know who he is, and, and, and things like that. If anything happens, you know, uh, what you do. Anyone fighting? Um, a lot of people have bus stops in their area to get kids off the bus fighting sometimes, but that's a problem. And listen for screams or anywhere, somebody could pay me in trouble. Uh, of course, you know, uh, if you hear someone screaming help, probably even call the police. Okay, some of these, uh, I don't want to, you know, <coughs> over my boundaries, but I think these are important to go over. Uh, set a good example by observing the law yourself if you disagree with it. Uh, teach your children to respect authority. Know where your children are, what they are doing, who they are with. I mean, if your kid's it's 3 in the morning and your 14-year-old is at home, there's probably a problem. And you probably should look into that. Uh, Establish a plan in your home which is uh, conducive to respect for the rights of others. That, you know, those are just pretty much common sense of being a good parent, everyone. And, I mean, and that's what we need to do, and that's what I really think is lacking in this country now is a lot of the, the core values like this that, that we need to practice. And uh, probably everybody in this room practices them, but they wouldn't be here and concerned. But, very important. Okay. Um, 
please this product the parents during your children to express their views and listen to them. Uh, to a certain extent. I, I don't buy that one uh, 100%. Um, we get a lot of problems because kids want to express themselves and they, they, they uh, have the answers, but I can still prefer to go the back end for that. So, uh, you can't let, you have to be a parent. I've tried to be a friend to my kids. It doesn't work. You have to be a parent. Sometimes you have to just tell them how it is and how, what your rules are, and they have to go by it. And then there's other alternatives. Um, assist your children in completing their education. Very important. Make the kids go to school. Okay. They have to go to school. That's the law. Um, recognize uh, your children's problems are very different than the ones you face at their age. That's true. Um, it's a terrible world right now out there. I would, I would hate for my kids to be young again with all the drugs and, and things and the temptations that are out there now. Uh, every day you read about a new drug or a new uh, injection, you get high or a chemical or something, and it's just, it's just bizarre. I mean, it's really tough. So you really have to understand. You have to know what you're looking for. You, like I said, you have to be that parent where if you want to turn your kid's room upside down, you do it. They don't have rights while they're in your house. You know, you're, you're the boss. And, and sometimes I run into a lot of people that, that don't, they're not the boss in their house. Their kids are. And they back off. And you can't do that. Okay. <coughs> uh, Strength of family ties by sharing success, failure, and problems of all family members. That's basically common sense. We'll just be open. Talk to your children about long-range effects of wrongdoing will have on their lives. Uh, that's important. Uh, society right now is very, very competitive. You probably used to get a couple screw-ups, you know, when we were children, and you could pick yourself up and move on. It's not that way anymore. You screw up out there, you, you're, it's really tough to, to succeed. So it's, it's very important. Um, talk to your children about the long range effects of all that we have. Uh, get to know your local resources, which are equipped to deal with domestic problems. Um, that's pretty personal. I don't want to get too much into that, but uh, kids do suffer from domestic problems. Uh, that, that goes without saying, and that's, that hasn't changed over the years. When there's a problem between a mother and father, there's usually a problem with the kids. So. Do be aware of what's out there to help you out. Okay, uh, resist crimes as a citizen, exercise your right to vote, follow uh, the state and national elections, support all efforts by law enforcement officials to eliminate illegal activity. That's a big one. Expect your responsibility to serve on jury support as a witness. Everybody knows what a pain jury duty is, but you know, it's important. Uh, avoid patronizing any business whose operations violate the law. Okay, you know a, a place where where drugs are being sold, an establishment or a, at a bar that's serving underage. Turn them in first, then we go. But, you know, uh, that's just giving them the okay. The more business they have, the more okay they can do it to the end of the business. Um, there's just like a little thing on the side. I don't know if you can see that flyer on there. But it's just, again, common sense. A lot of this is common sense. Um, yeah. Make your views known to public officials through appropriate means. And Mr. Bolton does that at, on a regular basis, and I respect him for that. Even though him and I don't agree on everything, he does do that. And that, that is, uh, that's what makes democratic society. Um, demonstrate your views in a way that would set a good example for young people. I hate to hear parents that say, well, they don't need to go It drives me crazy. And, and that's, I think about that when I read about it. Uh, protect your property from damage or loss by removing temptation. That's what we talked about, the attractive nuisances. Uh, things that people can climb to get into windows, 
open windows with no screens in, um, sliding glass doors that you don't have a bar or a broom, kind of broomstick in the bottom where people can just uh, slide a credit card in and open the door. Um, there's all kinds of stuff that you have to really, really burgle through with your house. I worked in worked in the wrong clubs in which you were a member in the crusade against crime. Um, that's kind of like what I was getting at when, you, when I said about the pods and stuff. You, you, uh, you frequent a, a social club or you frequent a, 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 an activity or a league. You know, talk to people, get them involved in this. Uh, I don't care if one person in one of these pods I'm talking about turns something in that turns out to that we make an arrest, or we save someone from getting hurt, or save someone's property, this whole program is a success. One people, one person. I say in 30 years, if I save one one kid from taking drugs, or one kid for, from from a real bad family turned out to be a success, and I was part of that, I think that was worth my whole career. So we have to get people involved, and we have to let them know that it's very, very important probably one of the most important things. Society's cracked really bad right now, and we can't let it crack anymore and fall apart. We gotta repair that crack, and the only way we're gonna do that is to band together and not take crime, and not take criminal activity in the neighborhoods. Confirm with law enforcement on what to do if confronted with the riot, bomb threat, or long piece for demonstration. Um, we did that. That's a one of the calls that, that's really tough on me because when we get bomb threats in places, I have to make the decision whether to evacuate or not to evacuate. The last thing I want to do is say, "Oh, doesn't evacuate if the place blows up like Oklahoma City." I mean, I don't, you know. So you have to know what to do, know a protocol. And if you work in an office, uh, you work in a school, you have to know the protocol, and, and everybody has to know. It. Demonstrations sometimes we have those. We usually, usually don't have any problem. They, they follow the law, they get the permits. We don't have any problem with that. Work with clergymen, educators, and others in your community are concerned with social problems. That goes back to the, uh, the one we talked about with domestic. Now, know your resources and who you can talk to. Uh, these are professionals, they can give you better answers you know, than you can get uh, at the grocery store or down Okay, let's get started. You know, the first thing we want to do is make our, our homes and vehicles safe, and that's locking. Uh, locking our doors, locking our car doors. No way to call the police. Um, the, um, the lady in the back, her question pretty much answered that. Um, it's just like when, when they always told you in school, no question's a stupid question. Uh, pretty much, no call's a stupid call. If it's important to you, if it worries you, whether it seems stupid to someone else, it's important and we need to answer. Okay, so no call is a stupid call. Um, write down license numbers. We get license numbers all the time, and a lot of these license numbers have led to good drug arrests that, that the task force may be by. If you have a house that has constant traffic in and out all hours of the day and night um, people that you never see you know and all of a sudden they're showing up one two three times a day um, write down license numbers there's nothing wrong with writing down a license number and turning it in to us then hey there's a lot of traffic on our street i think there might be something going on down the path again and uh, we will run the license numbers and keep track of them. If we see a pattern, then we will investigate further. Uh, if we see that there are no drug dealers or drug users, we usually open up a case uh, with a task force on there. So uh, it always doesn't pan out, but uh, more times than not, we do get good information and we do end up making an arrest somewhere near those people. That they're dealing with, or, or, um, 
Um, meet on a regular basis. Like I said, that's up to you guys. I'll assist you however I can. You ask me what you need, what you want. I will try to accommodate you. And uh, learn how to be a proactive organization. Of course, we want to be proactive. When you're reactive, the problem's already happened. We don't want that. We want to be proactive. We want to stop the problem from happening. And that's some of the things we talked about tonight. Um, is there any questions? Any comments? Any? Yes. You've please. covered everything. You've <coughs> done a good job. Thanks. <laughs> I'm sorry about that call <laughs> earlier. <laughs> Remember, I taught in Homewood in the hill. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time. Uh, it's very important to me that this, this many people came out, like I said uh, before. And then we've had seven or eight people come out. And let's try to, to spread this a little more and try to get some people involved. And, uh, you know, if you have a problem, if you want to talk to me, if you want to meet, call me. Beth will usually get to call or we'll schedule something. I don't think my, my days are not that busy where I can't schedule something. Uh, this is important to me. And I don't have too much time left before I retire, so I would uh, like to see this take off before I leave. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief. I'm learning so much. Um, was that? Click ahead one. I, I was talking a few minutes about what I foresee as the structure for how to organize this thing. You all may come up with a better structure, and we're open to that. What what plays in one zone may not play in another based on the number of people involved and, and how condensed you may be. So. But we have six zones to, to deal with, and, and oh, you yeah, can, that's what we, we can. We can. We can. I'll I'll spell you for a couple of minutes, and you can jump back and on that. But uh, in the big picture, to have two or three people for the zone that would be responsible, like I said, for 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 coordinating the information, coordinating the people, coordinating the watchers underneath. Um, I had placed back there um, two sheets. One is zone captain slash committee member and the other one is just the watcher my vision for the person the persons that want to become zone captains is that they will form the base of the safe clean and green committee for the city and work with julie the, the um, chair of the committee and perhaps grow into other things based in your neighborhood if, once you start to coordinate and work with each other on a volunteer level, there may be some cleanups that we can do together. There may be a empty lot that we can talk about to, to go above and beyond what we're talking about tonight, but we'll crawl before we walk. But that was my vision for the individual in the service of zone capital. Uh, block watchers, as Chief was describing, you know, ideally we can get people strategically arranged throughout a zone to be able to cover certain areas from their porch they go to walk the dog, whatever sort of routine that they can take advantage of to be observant doing those types of things. So, like I said, as the zone captain, disseminate information because I think it'll be important for you if, if the department determines zone four is seeing an increase in this activity. So that information passes to the zone. That passes either through a, through a phone tree or an email tree to individuals in the zone so they know what to keep an eye out for and where to keep an eye out. Um, again, the, the call meetings, you may not need to meet monthly, you may meet quarterly, you may need to meet every two weeks. Yes? My question about the, the um, meetings, and those would be in the different zones, so you could have those, like, for chance you could have those at your own home, or would you have, do you have to have them here in the city yeah, building, you could have you them wherever you want to? Wherever you want, like your picnic table in the backyard, and if, if you, if your group grows to a sizable number, maybe a, a local church. Um, if that gets to be a problem, let me or Chief go and, and we'll, we'll get you a place to meet if you, if you feel, you know. But, you know, I think a little more informal probably makes it's things go a little better. easier. But yeah, but that that is, that would be you. That would be what you're comfortable with doing. Some people may not 
want to use their home in that capacity, and I respect that, but yet want to be his own captain, so, um, but maybe another individual would volunteer that. Maybe there's a park in your zone where you could all gather at the park during a nice weather kind of thing. Yeah, it, I think that you may want to meet, I, I would think off the top of my head, you probably want to meet monthly for the first couple months so you get familiar with everything, and you probably bring a few more recruits in kind of thing, and then maybe go to quarter and we want to serve information to you along those lines and help you get the word out. There, there is some signage out there. It is still on the streets. I don't know exactly where they're located from the last time. I have some signs too. So, well, that's the kind of thing that we can do. Are they big street signs? Like no, they're about 12 by 12 uh, plastic, thick plastic. Oh. Close to that sheet. They're about yeah. this big across here, 12 by 12. She's and they, they have that logo on them with the little guy with the bandana and the JDI. You can put those wherever you wanted to. Pardon me? You can put those pretty much like wherever you wanted to. Mm -hmm. I, I'm i sure I'd have a problem with the street department if you start sticking them on <laughs> telephone. <laughs> you can have them on in your yard or something like that. That's fine. I think there's some up. Yeah, there is. There is oh, my Anna has seen them. Yeah, there, there's one so from the town. Yeah, but uh, I have some if you want to put one on, on a post in your yard or in your window yeah, or something. Yeah. That's I don't have a problem with that. I mean, if, if you really identify a spot that enters your neighborhood, let me know. I, I will intercede with, with uh, okay. Manager Graziani and nudge it a little bit if we have to. For the sake of getting things going, there's three council people here tonight. I have a hunch they might push a little bit too if you ask them and said this is really the best place for it. We, we can make it happen, I'm confident. I'm sorry, go ahead. That's okay. So your blocks are really blocks, 600 blocks, 700 blocks, 800 blocks, or how are your blocks? Okay, I'll blow it Yeah, okay. I told Don Albert that I'd have him out of here before Dancing with the Stars came on. Oh, Chris. Okay, this is your town, and the brown is our patrol area that we're responsible for when we answer call. Um, zone one is the half of Main Street to McKinley Avenue, train station, post office, up to Alexandria Street. Okay, that's zone one. Zone two is the other side of Main Street, over to Spring Street and up around Lincoln here, up around that area, kind of where the parking meters are. Okay, zone three is a big zone. It encompasses uh, everything past zone one, the whole way out to the bridge, past where the corner store used to be, where Esposito's TV is now. That bridge, up all over the hospital, around the hospital, they call Ridgeview Heights, then Kramer Heights, up in Allegheny Avenue and those, those streets. That's all zone three, and six ward over across the bridge. That's all zone three. That's a big thing. Five is below the tracks, and it goes from two out to Cedar Street, down all around the stadium and Legion Keener Park, that's zone five. Zone four is everything above the tracks up on the hill from the city line clear over to uh, Josephine Street in that area that borders Derry Township. Zone 6 is Cedar Street and down and out to Sheets, out to the rolling mill, all fifth wars. Now the reason these zones are that way is because when, when we assign a patrol officer, there's usually two working, sometimes three. They're assigned zones. One car always has one and three, and the other car always has two, four, five, and six. Okay, that's how we're, we're assigned. There's three, we have a beat guy that walks downtown. He'll walk a couple hours, check doors, check the alleys, and uh, those are the beats and one and two. We do have uh, Susan brought it to my attention about the neighborhood. That is called Outbeat. 
and when they're we don't do it on a regular basis but when you have a rise in criminal activity in a particular area I'll assign somebody out for you. Like if we have a lot of cars getting into up on the hill, I'll say, okay, this officer, you, you have zone four tonight, walk some out people, because we're having a lot between three and five. Uh, doesn't happen a lot but when we have a spark, you know, in criminal activity, we we'll do it that way. Um, this is the way it's been since I started, as far as the zones, and as you can see, this zone, uh, one and three, everybody always fights there, and they never used to want one and three because we had all, like, Jim's Bar and the Kennedy Hotel and all those places, and you always had the hospital call where the guy's going nuts in the emergency room, and everybody's like, oh, I don't want one and three, and then what? Uh, it's really tapered off, so it's pretty, uh, pretty even, the zone, but that's how it's broken down, and that's how the cars control. Any questions on that? You do the rundown of the zones. You said you do one and three together and then right. two, two, four, five, and six. Okay. Two, four, five, and six. It's kind of like divides the town in half if you go that way. You know. So, how often do they patrol those areas? That's a pretty big area. All night, all day. Uh, and they hit all those areas? Yeah. It's not that big of an area. It's only 2.4 square miles. Is that something about right now? And you yeah. think they hit every street? Not every street. I wouldn't say. I couldn't say they hit every street uh, because okay. you're you're getting calls. Mm -hmm. um, we average 350 calls a month. So mm -hmm. if you divide that, you know, by 30 days mm -hmm. and by shifts, you're getting a couple calls a shift. So you might be headed up to here, and they say, you know, there's a, a traffic accident, it, like you're at a shopping center. Well never mm -hmm. got up there and you might have a DUI in that traffic accident which is going to tie you up for two hours yeah. and so you know I would be a liar if I said we hit every street we don't you know we do what we can what's your highest zone uh, crime rate though as far as incidents right what, now, what the police department has to respond to uh, I would say the one and three zones are, are, are higher I mean it's it's not as bad as it used to be it was totally I mean, it was like double what two, four, five, and six used to be. It's pretty close. How many miles is the city of the trip? Two, two point four square miles. How much actually road mileage do you have? I would, I would. You never know. Since if there was a like, I don't even know, like an example of something, an activity going on. And there was maybe some particular zone. Would you notify the zone captain so that they could alert their block? As long as long as oh yeah, like if we had a rash of car break-ins or something like that, yeah, we would. The only thing we would <coughs> or if like there was an escape convoy. Well, that's that's kind of the <laughs> mixel thing that that'll give you alerts. You can run. It. I'm not a technology guy, so I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> but uh, um, we would notify you. Uh, Amber alerts, things like that. We would notify the block captains, and then you know you get a list once you get more organized. Um, the only thing we wouldn't notify you is if it would jeopardize the investigation. That's the only thing. Or if it had, like, if, if it was an undercover, or if, or if we had information that was was personal and fu fell under like, um, sure, I understand. You know, the I the laws, the yeah. laws and stuff. Anything else? Okay, you, sorry. No, so that's fine. Now, what are the blocks? Pardon me? What are the blocks? That's up to you guys. I mean, if, if you, maybe you're the only one that's interested in two or three blocks in your zone, or you, you call your neighbor and say, So you could have a couple streets, or just yes. your block. You could have, you could have a whole zone. <laughs> Well, I think ideally, as, a, as like, if you were the captain, ideally what you would want to do is, you know, it would be easy and your tendency would be to get the neighbors who you know to be a part of this. But ideally what you're going to want to do is, is get people strategically located throughout the zone. 
You know Absolutely. what I mean? Absolutely. No, no one. Yes. So that, Absolutely. so that, yeah. So your five are not clustered in, in right. four adjacent houses. So how do you get that word out? You're going to have to talk to your neighbors. You're going to have to. Get well, that's can, that. That is can suffice more than our neighbors. That would be like. <laughs> yeah. Well. Got any ideas? I mean, we can put an ad in the paper. Can you go like door to door just to inform your neighbors that you are in this neighborhood? Absolutely. If they would want to help you just to keep an eye out around your sign up a sheet. Absolutely. You can you can even introduce yourself and say, Hey, this is my cell phone number. If you see anything crazy going on, give me a call. Or if you see anything suspicious, give me a call. You're the block out. I mean, it's it's a uh, it's a tough thing. It is a tough thing to get this going and keep it going. So an ad in the paper might help. It might, yes. And we, you guys can think of something to write or how you want to. I, I don't want to do it for me. You know, that's not fair. Right. No, they just need to get the word out there. I mean, maybe another, like this, this meeting, the word was put out. Maybe they need to do it again. Yeah, I think it was an article in the paper following up this meeting yeah. and saying, you know, maybe we should end tonight and say, you know, setting a date for the next well, and, and the right. next council yeah, meeting and bring it up again about it was I a mean, good turnout today. Being in the infancy now, I, I certainly wouldn't be opposed to trying to host a few of those meetings to help you all get started. You know, maybe either at a house or a, or a church or a neutral spot in the or zone. Even here, I mean, we yeah, or here. Else going and, on. and target people specifically in those zones. We, we, we didn't know how to do that for tonight, but what, since everyone signed the sheet and put your, your physical address on there, Chief and I can sit down and bed and so break you out based on how many you're in the zone. Hopefully you're not all in the zone two or something like that. I don't think that would be the case. Well, that's what I was going to ask you, why don't you ask yeah, how many are from zone one? Yeah. And that way you know. See if we have rent here for me. We've only lived in, we've only moved to Lake Trobe in, in the last two years. So I know a couple of faces in that. Uh, but the thing is, there's a lot of people I don't know in this room. They could live two doors down the way everybody works and everything like that. You know, and yeah, yeah. certainly. I mean, that's a, I don't know. That, yeah. I doubt it's probably on the chief's shoulder. If the chief is willing to let each person say, I'm in the 200 block of whatever street, he'll look on the map and tell you where you are. I I don't know that. I, I would have to study the putting it back up. I, I would know. I would be able yeah, to identify okay. my them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so yeah. if, he, if I mean, you could, just to kind of get a feel, yeah. if, it would, if we have a rep here. Yeah. I know we have. We have pretty much everything over here. Good representation. Which is great. People, I see people yeah. from Warzone. What, what, if we go back to that form I was referring to, if if you all would first determine what you want to be. If you only want to be a watcher, then use the watcher form. And if you grab this captain thing, cross that out, put your name on on it just to let us know that you want where you want to serve. And then we have the sign up sheet. If you, if you, I might I might have run out. If, if that's the case, then then we can work backwards off of the off of the uh, sign up sheet and get you coordinated in that fashion. And then ideally those those of you who agree to be zone captains, maybe we can follow being just the zone captains and then sort of get everybody back out again to start the recruitment thing. Don't forget about Facebook, neighborhood Facebook, things yeah. like that. I mean I, I don't I couldn't tell you how to get on Facebook. <laughs> My guy solved a lot of crimes with it. I mean they they serve it all the time, they get information, which is great. Yeah. I might be jumping ahead, but where would you like us to submit these, uh, the other forms that were out? You can just give them to me, okay. or, or put, a, put them on the table in the back as you leave. Okay. And, and you're referring to the... Um, information. The information, sir. This is something that we thought would be interesting anecdotally that you can sort of go through and, and there should be copies back there but I, it's, it's this questionnaire but I call it the survey on the thing. Answer the questions based on what you think is going on in your neighborhood and we'll share that information with the chief of the department. I got a lot of literature once you guys get started. And, and, uh, if you want to just write your, your just, zone. Yeah, just write your zone or address on it somewhere and I, we'll work right. backwards from there. I mean I have uh, I have checklists, inventories, things like that for your, your property. I have a lot of that stuff that I'll, it's just, it's, you know, once you 
captains and um, I know that I like I said the police don't want to get involved as far as the organization and everything but if we're real like heavy on in some zones and light on other zones I, I will approach people when we're in those zones and ask them if they would participate. I mean they don't have to be a captain but they can they can sign up and, and be watchers or whatever and, and maybe even call a captain from another zone if they, they have something to report. I mean there's like I said, this it has to be organized, but it can be loosely organized. Uh, we don't want to make it too too crazy. But, uh, you don't want to make it difficult. We right. Keep it as simple as you can. Right. <laughs> hey, Jeff, you want to take a couple minutes? You guys want to talk about reality tour? This is something going on that, that plays right into being safe, clean, and green. And, and will give you a little better description of what's going on with that. We have a couple things going on, actually. The reality tour is coming to Latro. Um, we were talking before about the drugs with the kids. Parents don't realize what actually is all going on out there. Um, Maria Music here is bringing the, the reality tour from Greensburg to Latro. We're going to start it in the fall here. It's once a month, um, one evening a month, and children come with their parents or their guardian. They do not come by themselves. Um, and I have some literature back there that I'll pass out uh, Mary and coach about it. Um, the program is geared to, to, so that the parents and the child hear the same information. Your children can no longer pull something out on you because you know as much as they do almost. Um, it, it's very educational. Um, it's run by a woman by the name of Norma Norris out of Butler. It's a nonprofit. Everybody that is at the program is a volunteer. We need volunteers desperately. First, we need to do something about the drug problem. I believe there was 25 deaths already plus one thousand. That's not counting all the overdoses that were that were revived. Um, right now, the, the program will start in the fall, like Beth said. We have a meeting coming April 23rd, 6 o'clock, this building, this room, to try to get volunteers on board. Um, there's many activities that you can do. You can be a greeter. You can help with software issues. Um, you can be someone who takes the crowd from one scene to another because what, what the program does is you come in, you hear a little, uh, little presentation, you see a skit, you go into an arrest scene where someone is actually arrested, handcuffed, put into a jail cell. From that scene, you then go to an emergency room scene where the person has passed and the parents are called to be told them. From that scene, you go to a funeral home scene where everyone that is there is required to give their condolences to the parents. They look in the casket. In the casket, they see a, there's a mirror in there that shows their reflection back to them and says, you don't want this to be you. The whole program, the whole way through, it just keeps saying to the kids, I was just like you, I was just like you, I was in sports, I had good grades in school, I did all the right things, but I got into the wrong crowd, or I did something that my friends were doing, I, I just went the wrong way. Um, to think. Um, usually we have somebody speak from the police department on the narcotics, gives you a good idea of what's out there, what to look for. Um, we have recovering addicts that speak to tell you, let them know what they've been through um, and how they've recovered. It's not a scare tactic for your, for your children, but it's reality. It hits you right in the face. It shows you, um, the task force is here to show you, especially the parents, what the kids are doing with the items. Um, nuts and bolts, they're melting, or they're, they're putting heroin in them, and they're putting whatever in there, pills. Um, if you see it laying in your kids, you know, room, you're thinking, oh, now what are they doing? You know, they're, they're taking something apart or whatever, but the task force will be here with all the different drugs and shows you exactly what they look like, all the different paraphernalia that they use with them that you might find in your kids, um, you know, bedrooms or backpacks. Um, so that's starting in, uh, we're, we're organizing in that right now. Um, that's starting in September, we're hoping. We're uh, looking for donations at the Rotary's uh, funding it right now. So that's, that's the one thing that we're bringing. 
the packet that I gave you tells you all about it. Um, or we have another, another meeting, and it's all it's run by volunteers. Um, we're looking for kids. We're talking at the high school, the junior high. Um, there's some acting parts in there that we need the kids to be involved. So, you know, any students um, looks really good on a college resume. So we also need adults. We do need adults. You know, that are willing to give two and a half hours <coughs> of their time, one night a month. Um, they don't go on during the summer because the attendance is a good in the summer. People are going on vacations and different things. And usually there's not one in December. So. But that goes back with this, the community watch program. Right. The reason why there's so much stuff and um, there's burglaries and that type of thing is because they're all funding their drug habits with it. Um, there's a lot of things going on in your neighborhood that you probably don't even know about. Um, people are using, people are, are um, they still have the funds available to them. Um, there's been rash, you know, I was a victim of a car theft. Um, great, I live up on Chestnut, right up on the hill there. and. Um, Somebody stole things out of my vehicle. My kids were in, my, in and out of my car all day. My car wasn't locked. My purse was gone. The only way I knew I didn't pay attention is the guys were bringing them up when I was working and having handcuffs and all my credit cards were just locked. I'm like, they're like, are you missing something? I'm like, I don't think so. Why? They're like, he's yours. I'm like, are you kidding me? So you want to talk about trying to throat punch somebody? Hmm. Um, but they're stealing things, they're going through cars, and they're grabbing your change, and, and that's the other thing we need to know about. People think, I'm not going to call for 50 cents, or I'm not going to call because my car was all disrupted, but all my change is gone. But if they're taking change from every car, and there's 20 cars, that's enough to go buy a stamp bag of heroin to use for that day. That's only going to get them through that day. They're going to start over another day. They're going to do something you know, more desperate. Um, so that is where the crime watch and the neighborhood watches go in hand in hand with us bringing the reality tour here um, and the drug the truck problem in Litro, which by the way is everywhere, just not just in the drug. Um, so the other thing is uh, the nixel.com. Right? There's a, a paper back there. It's the same thing as the Global Connect with the school district. They call if there's a cancellation or a delay. Nixel.com is the community based kind of Global Connect. Um, our plan is eventually once you guys get up and running, we'll be able to send messages out to anyone that signed up. Um, community Watch Zone 3 meeting tonight, don't forget. So we'll work with the zone captains on that. Um, also, anything, um, we are talking about suspicious activity and things going on, unless it's uh, gonna hamper an investigation, we will not announce it, but for example, when the big standoff on Wood Avenue, there were so many people disrupted and, and pulled from their homes that day. I was getting a million calls, when can I go back? When can I go back? This way we'll be able to keep in contact with people. Um, you know, uh, Lloyd Avenue is closed, um, or Lloyd Avenue is now open, vehicle wreck, fire here, um, that kind of thing. And then tips too, I'm gonna start doing some crime prevention tips on the on Nixle. Um, back to the car thing too. There's a, a string of car, a car, you know, Kramer Heights. Hey, we're not gonna lock the car. Uh, or there's been a suspicious person going door to door asking for personal information. If you see this person, please report it to the Lake Police. So everybody should sign up for that. The other thing is National Night Out. Um, this will be our third year, and I'm not even sure a lot of residents know about it. But it's a crime prevention, crime awareness event that we have at the stadium. So that's a big thing, which the zones, once you guys get up and running, you're more than happy to have a table down there with your neighbors, you know, just to, um, you know, promote your neighborhood. From um, Have your neighbors, we can, when we put it in the paper, we can say all zones will be there for, for a neighborhood watch program sign up. That kind of thing. That's August. It's the first Tuesday evening in August. But that night we also have, we have every um, organization there, uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, the West Wilson County Drug Task Force, the Sheriff's Department, the State Police, everybody's there. They talk about crime prevention, and crime awareness. Um, we always have a band playing, we have food. All the money raised goes to our canine unit. Um, and that's something else we can get the neighborhood um, program involved in. I was thinking to do something fun. You know, maybe we can have block parties that day um, or that Sunday to kick off the week. Um, and this is gonna be an ongoing thing. You guys are starting now, but maybe by you know the end of July, August, yes. everybody can start being comfortable with all your neighbors and have something like that to even bring in more people. So that's something to think about. 
But if anyone ever has any questions, my card's back there, Chief Moomore's card. When I'm there, I answer the phone, leave a message, um, or if I'm there, I answer, I get it to the Chief. If we don't know the answer, we'll find the answer. We'll get right back to you. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. So. I'll, I'll say again, if, if you know you want to be a zone captain and you're able to secure one of the copies, go ahead and sign it and leave it on the desk back there. If you don't have a copy, maybe <coughs> jump back on to the sign-up sheet and just mark somewhere in, in, on your line that you want to be a zone captain or you want to be a watcher. And then the survey, as this lady correctly pointed out, that I've got to put a line for, for where you're located. If you know what zone you're in, or just put your street address, and we'll, we'll divvy it out of the survey. But this will be interesting information after we collate it, we can share it with you all after you get organized. So, so it'll be interesting to see the perceptions. Of, and another piece of it is Chief's data. You know, what you think is going on could be totally accurate, could, could be inaccurate, could be a lot of this, a little of that kind of thing. So it would be interesting. If we start feeding you that information, you can you know, be more cautious of what's going on. Um, council people, any thoughts or comments before before we get them home for dancing? Uh, <laughs> the next step, a meeting of the zone captains. What, what yeah, I'll do? I think we yeah. should firm something up. <coughs> I'm late. I was late, sorry, because I um, thought it was at 7. <laughs> oh. So um, I'm on the city council, and I'm, you know, the chairperson of the Safe, Clean, and Green Committee. Um, and Nick and I really had met uh, just after I was elected and, and started thinking about having a neighborhood watch. I think it's a great idea. Um, I, my children have grown up here and I still have a 13 year old trying to grow up here. And um, so anyway, uh, I think it would be very beneficial if we could secure a date um, to have a next meeting. You know, even if it's not just, I don't even know at this point that we should limit it to zone patterns. No, no. Just a matter of getting all of you back Plus, and if we put a date in the paper, because I'm sure we're going to have an article in the paper, right? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big baby. That, that I, think that, I think an article as opposed to an ad is, yeah. is much better. Um, and uh, I come from the world of nonprofits, so we work really hard to get articles instead of paid ads. Um, so at any rate, uh, if we could do that tonight, and, and I remember back when we first met, that talking about the, the, what's the name of that night? National Night Out. National Night Out is being a great kickoff night because we could, we should by then have, have captains in place. Second week in August, um, and then you can have tables to recruit those people who don't live near you. You know, I mean, the zones are big enough that, you know, I feel like I know most people, 90% of the town, but I'm sure I don't, you know? Um, but I've lived here all my life, and like you said, you've only been here a couple of years, so I think that would be, yeah? No, that, that's fine. Be too. No, I, I don't know if everyone's prepared to, to no. select the collective date at this moment, or can we, can, we should have all, everyone's contact information either by email, or for those of you who don't have an email, by phone. So we can communicate with everyone that way. So we can, and Beth can check as to the status of this room. And then when you come back in, you'll know how you're arranged, and Chief and I and, and Beth, everybody can get together and sort of lay out the map, a little, maybe a second map that gives that kind of a location. So, I mean, if, if everyone's consensus agreement to maybe get together in early or mid-May, and then start thinking about other other neighbors in your area that you could ask, you could get them here. That's great. Sounds good. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think <laughs> Are you comfortable picking a date? Yeah, a Monday is a good day. A month. It's not council. And that's the same as we have the meeting dates, and I'm doing all well, the We're the Monday. second and fourth. So I do the one or three. Uh, one or three. The 19th of May would be the third Monday. May 19th. Okay. Before Memorial Day, it's. Yeah. Pick it off, get everybody. 6 30 a good time, or you want to push it back to 7? 630. 630. 630. May 19th, 630 here. And um, like I said, we'll, we'll go through the information you all share with us. And if you can knock on your neighbor's door, get he or she to come with you. Yeah, if you bring recruits, then you yeah. might not be locked into <laughs> yeah. being the captain. That's, that's 
it's good to get the word out. Get it is, yeah. I mean, and there may be people who don't even know about it. I would think probably three organizational meetings would be beneficial. Because, I think so, yeah. Yeah, there may be people that are interested who couldn't come tonight. Right. Word gets right. out. Good point. Well, and I'm going to um, utilize our the Latrobe Police Department Facebook page and the National Night Out Facebook page. I mean, social media is the worst sometimes, but it is also the best to get word right, out right. to them. And that would have put us like on this to that August date, which would be good. It's August the 5th. It's always the first yeah, Tuesday of the month. It's going to be 5.30ish to 8 o'clock out at the stadium. Um, and that is, it's at least three or four. Yeah, and it's, it's an awesome program. I mean, August the 8th? Yeah. August the 5th. Five days. Five days, yeah. At the state, like But I will announce the next meeting um, on the Facebook pages, um, and then I will continue to do that through the beginning of May. Um, also, I can put it out in the paper um, with the next meeting date, mm -hmm. um, so I will do that too. Good. The other thing is that it's been well narrated. Final thoughts? Patricia, you, your constituency sits here in front of you. Do you have anything to say? Okay, folks.